Over the past decade, all-in-one liquid coolers have flooded the market in most part thanks to the Danish company Acetec, whose innovative designs help bring PC water cooling mainstream. And because Acetec holds over a dozen patents on the closed loop cooler design, many AOs on the market are essentially the same. A pump on block circulating water across a cold plate to an external radiator, all in a closed loop system. However, some manufacturers have been able to develop and patent their own alternatives to that design. This Castle 360EX from Deepcool is the perfect example of a non acetec design. It's been around for about three years now and is an all-in-one liquid cooler that offers very good price to performance. But can the performance be improved without significantly increasing the cost? We're going to find out because Deepcool just released their next generation of all-in-one coolers and they sent me the, the successor to the Castle 360EX, the LS720. We're going to put these two coolers head to head and see how much, if any, extra performance, three years of development and about 10 extra dollars gets. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and today we're reviewing the Deepcool LS720 AIO. Now, despite the name, this is a 360 millimeter cooler and today we'll be seeing what's in the box, going over the specs and features of the LS720, installing it on our test bench and in a test system. And finally, we'll check out its performance, comparing it to its predecessor, the Castle 360EX, as well as some other 360 millimeter AIOs. The LS720 comes packed in completely recyclable fiberboard with a minimal amount of single-use plastics. In the box is the closed-loop cooler, three Deepcool FC120 RGB fans, the mounting hardware for all modern CPU sockets including LGA1700 and AM5, and a blank pump block cover. The closed loop cooler consists of an aluminum radiator measuring 402 by 120 by 27 millimeters. The aluminum fin stack is about 26 millimeters thick with 13 rows of fins and a fin density of about 24 fins per inch. Like the Castle 360, the LS720's radiator features Deepcool's anti-leak technology. The radiator is connected to the bump block by a 410 millimeter tubes. The fourth generation dual chamber pump block measures 86 by 74 by 25 millimeters. It features a dual infinity mirror RGB design and a rotating logo plate. The three phase brushless motor is faster than last generations with a max RPM of 3100 RPM. Deepcool has reportedly redesigned the micro channel design on the copper cold plate for an Improved coolant flow. The proprietary 120 millimeter fans have a rated speed of 500 to 2250 RPM with a max airflow of 85.85 cubic feet per minute, a static pressure of 3.27 millimeters H2O, and a rated lifespan of 50,000 hours. The nine translucent blades are illuminated by hub mounted 5 volt addressable RGB LEDs. Deepcool provides a five-year limited warranty on the LS720. Following the pictographic instructions, installation of the water block was very straightforward and there was no clearance issues on my X570 motherboard with the tubes to the rear or in the Deepcool recommended orientation with the tubes facing down. However, pre-planning is required as the fans use proprietary connectors that daisy chain each fan together and the pump block RGB proprietary cable must also be daisy chained to the fan. There's also an included wiring harness that connects the fans to the motherboard fan header and five bolt ARGB header, as well as to SATA power, which is necessary for the fans to operate. Now, before I get into the thermal testing, first I tell you if you're interested in exactly how I test CPU cooler, there's a timestamp link below where I go over that in detail. I am using my Ryzen 7 3700X test bench today, which will allow me to dial in precise CPU power usage and simulate multiple consumer CPU types. And then for worst case scenario, I'll test it on my 32 core Threadripper. The list of 360 AIOs that have been able to pass a 10 minute torture test on that is, is short. Will this make the cut? We'll see, but the first thing I noticed with over 2200 RPM fans, 
This AIO was kind of loud. It measured 47.5 dBA above background. This compared to 44.3 dBA for the fan normalized test and 45.9 dBA for the Castle 360 with its 1800 RPM fans. Now let's take a look at the thermal performance and to start, we'll look at the performance of the deep cool AIOs across a few power levels to simulate multiple categories of CPUs from the bottom of the chart, which represents a heat load that just requires the upgrade to a 360 millimeter AIO to the top, which is hitting the upper end of what a 360 millimeter AIO can handle. And what we see is that down at the bottom of the chart, the performance of the new LS720 in blue and the older Castle 360 in red are basically identical. But as you increase the heat load, they start to pull further apart. But this is an A-64 torture test, which is, of course, more punishing workload than anything most people are going to do on their PCs. So let's isolate the 125 watt power profile which represents the type of CPUs most people are using 360 millimeter AIOs to cool. Your Intel i7Ks and i9s from a generation or two ago, overclocked Ryzen 7s or base speed Ryzen 9s. And we'll look at more normal workloads from an all core workload with Cinebench to a single core bursty workload with a 10 minute heaven loop. We see that there really isn't too much difference with the two deep cool AIOs. So let's see where the difference lie. Looking at the ADA 64 stress test, on the bottom we have the standard fan curve and only about a degree of separation. In the middle, when we ramp the fans to full speed for the duration of the test, the LS720 pulls ahead a little farther, but on the top of the chart, I swapped the stock fans with a trio of Noctua NFP12 Redux at 1700 RPM for a fan normalized test, and we'd see the two coolers perform identically. So at this point on the surface, it's just looking like the LS720 is going with the brute force method of better cooling, faster, louder fans cool better. So how does the optimized micro fins and more efficient motor come into play? Well, the newer LS720 was really designed for newer higher end CPUs, your 12 and 16 core Ryzen 9s and 16 core i9 12900K. To demonstrate this, I'm using a 32 core Threadripper 2990WX that has four eight core dies spread around the CPU. So we're gonna need to use the entire cold plate surface to cool this CPU. And looking at the results, the LS720 is right up at the top of the chart only being beat by the Enermax Lictec TR42, which is specifically designed for the Threadripper with a full coverage cold plate. It pulls ahead of the Castle 360EX by almost 7.5%, while outperforming the other AIOs on the chart, some of which cost over twice as much. So ultimately, while there is a significant performance improvement with the new Deepcool LS720 over its predecessor, the Castle 360EX, most people who have mid-range CPUs, your six or eight core, 125 watt TDP CPUs and below, aren't going to see a major difference. However, if you have a top tier CPU to cool, a 5950X, a 12900K, then the LS720 is definitely gonna handle those. And thanks to a lot of little improvements made by Deep Cool, like the faster fans, the dual chamber pump that brings the cool liquid into the cold plate chamber to cool the CPU first before circulating it through the motor chamber to cool the motor, the more efficient motor dumping less heat into the loop, all those little improvements that may gain a degree or a fraction of degree adds up to one of the best performing AIOs I've ever tested. And combining that performance at just $140 US definitely makes it one, if not the best price to performance 360 millimeter AIOs available today. Now, there are some cons, the proprietary fans and cables, the fact that the fans need SATA power to work, even though you have to plug them into the motherboard fan header for the PWM and sensor control anyway, even if you use third-party standard PWM fans, you still need the proprietary cable harness for the pump block RGB. And finally, the sound level. The fans are loud at their top speed. However, the noise does drastically fall off as the fans ramp down and at idle, I could barely hear them. 
For more info and current pricing of the LS720 and the other AIOs I tested, you can check out the links in the description below. If you have any questions, you can ask in the comments. And as always, be sure to click that like and subscribe, and I hope to catch you in the next one.